Welcome back to my channel. In a previous video, I've shown you how to install Fedora Linux and get started with it. Today, we're going to take a different approach. We'll be installing Linux Mint, which is an excellent general purpose operating system that can handle a wide range of tasks from web browsing and coding to gaming and live streaming. Linux Mint is perfect for those who want to use their computer as a general productivity tool, but also have the option to game on it. It's not meant to be a full-fledged gaming console like other experiences, but rather a versatile OS that can accommodate various activities. In this video, we'll focus on installing Linux Mint and optimizing it for gaming. We'll cover the basics of getting started with Linux Mint, and I'll show you how to set up for smooth performance. One thing I won't cover is creating a bootable USB drive from the ISO file, as there are plenty of tutorials available online that can walk you through this process in detail. Let's quickly go over installing Linux Mint. First, click on the Install Linux Mint icon. Next, select your language and keyboard layout from the options presented. On the next screen, it's essential to click on Install Media Codex. After that, choose to erase disk and install Linux Mint. This option will overwrite any existing data on the selected disk with a clean installation of Linux Mint. The next menu will ask you to select a disk where you want to install Linux Mint. I will choose the SAN disk drive where I will be installing Linux Mint. Simply click install now. This next screen will provide a summary of changes that will be made to the disk. The following screen will ask you for time zone settings. After setting your time zone, you'll be prompted for credential information. To add an extra layer of security, I prefer to require my password upon login. Once you've entered this information and click continue, the install process will begin. The installation of Linux Mint took about seven to eight minutes. Now that we're all set up, let's restart the system. After a quick restart, we're now on the Linux Mint welcome screen. At this point, you'll be presented with a series of first steps that I recommend following. One of the first steps is to change your theme. Many users prefer a dark theme, which can provide a clean and modern look for their desktop. In addition to changing the overall theme, you could also access advanced settings to customize individual components of the theme. This next section allows us to create a system snapshot, also known as a system restore point if you're familiar with terms from Windows. A snapshot is essentially a backup of your system at a specific point in time allowing you to easily recover your system in case of failure or other issues. I won't be setting up a snapshot here, but I do recommend exploring this feature further so that you can have peace of mind knowing that you can easily revert back to a previous state if needed. The next step is to visit the driver manager. If you have any proprietary driver that requires installation, such as graphics cards or Wi-Fi adapters, it can be found and installed here. For example, NVIDIA drivers will appear in this section. Fortunately, it looks like this computer doesn't require any additional drivers. Let's take a look at the update manager. This is where we'll keep our software up to date by fetching all available updates. First, we need to update the update manager itself. Click on the update button to apply any available updates. Notice there's an option above asking if we want to switch to a local mirror. I recommend doing this step in order to improve our download speed. However, since it's not strictly necessary for our purposes, we can skip this instruction for now. One of the best features of Linux is its package manager, which handles all updates for you. In this case, simply clicking on update will update all software in your system. In the future, you'll receive notifications when updates are available in the tray icon. It's worth noting that Linux Mint will never force an update on you, but for security reasons, it's essential to keep your system up to date. Now that our updates are complete, we'll need to reboot the system. Before we do so, let's take care of a few additional things. The next thing we're going to take a look at are the system settings. Here, there are a few very important things we should change. Under general, you want to disable compositing for full screen windows. If left off, this will impact performance heavily. When we turn it on, we'll go back. The next important step is to adjust acceleration on the mouse. To do this, we need to find the mouse and touchpad. Find acceleration and set to constant. Next step is your display. Here, you want to make sure that your resolution and your frame rate match your monitor. Matching your display settings to your monitor shows a smooth and optimized gaming and viewing experience. For my example here, 1920 by 1080 at 60 hertz are the right settings. Let's head over to the firewall. While Linux is inherently secure, it doesn't hurt to add an extra layer of security. By configuring our firewall settings, we can further protect our system. Just turn it on. The next step is your software manager. We'll launch it so it can cache all of our applications. Our applications are now all cached and ready to go. 
Let's go ahead and close this application. Now that everything is set up, it's time to restart the computer. Now that we're fully up to date and back on our desktop, let's open up our software manager. The first thing I like to do is install Steam. To install Steam, type Steam in the search box. You'll see several options appear, but select one that simply says Steam. Make sure you choose the native package over the Flatpak version. As a newcomer to Linux, you'll need to be aware of permission settings when installing Flatpak applications. For the sake of stability and simplicity, it's generally recommended to install the native package for Steam instead of Flatpak. Let's click install to start the installation process. You will see a pop-up notification indicating which files are being installed onto your system if you're curious about what's being installed. Click continue and enter your password to proceed with the installation. Now that the installation is complete, we'll launch Steam and log in to finish the setup process. Once logged in, you'll see that Steam is fully installed on Linux Mint. However, we have a few more steps to configure Steam. The first step is configuring Steam Play. You can find this setting by heading over to the Steam menu and select Settings. From there, locate the Compatibility tab on the left side of the menu. Here, you want to enable Steam Play for all other titles. By enabling Steam Play, you'll be able to play a wider range of games on your Linux Mint system. You'll need to restart Steam after making the changes. Now that Steam has restarted, let's revisit the compatibility settings. Proton is a software combination that enables us to run Windows games on Linux. As you can see, it defaults to Proton Hotfix for me. Proton Hotfix provides Steam's Proton fixes for very important new release titles. When choosing Proton versions, keep in mind that multiple options are available. Typically, I prefer to enable Proton Experimental. However, there may be a specific version of Proton that works perfectly with a particular game and may already be chosen for it. When changing Proton versions here, keep in mind that they may not always work for specific games. Instead, you can adjust the game's Proton versions individually. For now, let's stick with Proton Hotfix. Now that we've installed a game from our library, it's time to make one final adjustment before starting gameplay. In the Steam menu, find the Downloads tab and locate Enable Shader Precaching. By disabling Shader Precaching, we're essentially skipping a step that can slow down our system for gaming. This is an outdated feature for Linux gaming. Now that we've downloaded Marvel Rivals, as it turns out, there's a specific setting that needs to be enabled in order to play Marvel Rivals smoothly. In your Steam library menu, right click on Marvel Rivals and select Properties. From there, navigate to the Launch Options section and add the following command. Steam Deck equals 1 percentage sign command percentage sign. This will allow us to override the launcher startup. Next, let's head back to the Compatibility tab and enable Proton Experimental. This will provide a more optimized experience for Marvel Rivals. We've already got Steam running, and I showed you Marvel Rivals running on this system, so gaming can be done right out the box. However, there are some optional steps that we can take to further enhance gaming. What we can do here is change the kernel of our system to add a more updated one and an optimized one. We can also update the video driver to an up-to-date version of Mesa. One that's recommended for Ubuntu-based systems is the Xanmod kernel. Now, why should we use the Xanmod kernel? Well, you would primarily use a Xanmod kernel to achieve significantly improved system responsiveness and performance, especially in scenarios demanding low latency like gaming, video editing, or real-time applications. It is specifically designed with optimizations focusing on minimizing input lag and maximizing the process speeds by incorporating custom settings and patches not found in the standard Linux kernel, essentially providing a smoother and more fluid user experience for demanding workloads. Now, just a heads up. While Xanmod strives for stability, be aware that custom kernels may sometimes introduce compatibility problems with certain hardware or software. For everyday tasks, the default Linux kernel was often sufficient and provided better compatibility. One of the reasons I would recommend using this kernel is if you have more cutting edge hardware in your system, for example, a newer graphics card or newer CPU. To install Xanmod, Let's head over to xanmod.org. Now this is something where you will need to pay attention. Here we have different versions for each class of CPUs. For Intel CPUs, it's relatively straightforward. You should know which generation you're on. If we check NeoFetch, it will tell you that you're on a 10th generation, 9th generation, or any generation of Intel. However, on the AMD side, we're only given the family class. 
So here we have Zen, Zen Plus, Zen 2, and Zen 3. On the other hand, we also see Zen 4 and Zen 5. How do you know which family your CPU belongs to? To find out, you need to do a quick Google search. And I recommend searching Tech Power Up as it is the best resource for determining the architecture of your CPU. At Tech Power Up's database, you'll see that my CPU is a Zen 2 processor. If we head back to Zenmod, it will let us know that our Zen 2 processor falls into the V3 class of CPUs. So if we're going to proceed with installing and downloading Zenmod, I'll have to make sure to install the V3 version. Before installing Zenmod kernel, there's an important step to take beforehand. Make sure to check your BIOS settings to disable secure boot. Once you've installed Zenmod kernel, you can re-enable secure boot. Let's proceed and quickly set up the Zenmod kernel. Let's open up a terminal window and follow step one, which is registering the PGP key. Copy the first line of output into your terminal, then press enter. Then with line two, we're gonna add the repository. So let's copy this line as well and enter it into our terminal. Press enter. Later, when we do a software update, it will pull information from the software source to check and see if there are any updates to the kernel. With this third line, be careful. You don't want to copy it and just press enter. As you may have already noticed earlier, you need to make sure that you fall under the correct CPU architecture version. While my CPU falls under V3, if you have an older CPU, make sure that you update the last digit to match your CPU class. For example, if you're on a V2 CPU, the last digit should be two. And if you're on a V4 CPU, it should be four. Since I'm on a V3 CPU, we'll keep it as V3. And there it is, Zanmod is now installed. To make it take effect, we need to restart our computer. Before doing so, one step I think is essential is to update your Mesa drivers. Here we have a Mesa repository from a Steam developer who goes by the name of Keysec, who maintains an up-to-date version of Mesa for Ubuntu-based systems. We're gonna add this PPA to our system. It will enable a repository in our package manager so that when we check for updates, new driver packages will be updated. Let's go and copy the first line, sudo add apt repository. We'll click enter when prompted. And now let's run sudo apt update, followed by sudo apt upgrade. And this update will give us access to the latest Mesa drivers on our system. It's essential to note that this repository is specifically designed for AMD and Intel based systems, not Nvidia. On NVIDIA systems, you can stick with the proprietary drivers as they are considered the best option for optimal performance. Now let's go ahead and restart our system. The grub menu will be present when booting your system. It's essential to know how to use it. One important step here is that if you ever encounter any incompatibilities, you should use the grub menu to troubleshoot and help resolve issues. To launch Linux Mint, simply click on Linux Mint 22.1 Cinnamon. However, if you're experiencing difficulties, click on Advanced Options and then select which kernel you want to boot with. If Zanmod is causing problems, try launching the system using the next available kernel that's not Zanmod. Now that we're back at our desktop environment, I'm going to go ahead and show you the details of our current kernel version. According to this information, we are running on kernel version 6.12.11 x64 v3 Zanmod 1. This confirms that we have successfully installed Zanmod kernel. We now reach Mesa version 24.3.4, which indicates we're running the exact current version of Mesa. Prior to this update, we were still using version 24.2.8. With these two updates to Linux Mint, the new kernel and video drivers, we're now enjoying improved performance. Let's review what we've done so far. We installed Linux Mint and fully updated our system, ensuring everything is up to date. Next, we installed Steam and explored its compatibility features. In the compatibility section, we configured it to enable Steam Play for all titles. We then disabled shader pre-caching as this step is no longer needed. After installing our game, we pointed to the required Proton version 
and used a launch option to ensure smooth gameplay. We upgraded our system with a lower latency kernel and the latest video drivers, boosting performance and keeping us running smoothly. Along with an up-to-date kernel and video drivers, we also have access to Flatpak applications, ensuring Linux Mint stays current and equipped with the software you need. As a general use distribution, it's an excellent choice for Windows users, offering a familiar interface and ease of use. Whether you're a casual web browser, coder, gamer, Linux Mint can be tailored to meet your needs. As far as gaming goes, there are still some limitations to consider. Many developers resist letting their NTG software run on Linux, which can be frustrating for players. To help overcome these challenges, I recommend checking out ProtonDB. ProtonDB is a community-driven database of games that successfully run on Linux. If you encounter any issues running a game, the community may have already found solutions and share them with you. For a list of games that are available to play on Linux with anti-cheat, I recommend checking out areweantichatyet.com. It is another community-driven database that provides information on which games have anti-cheat software that can be played on Linux. With everything we covered so far, this should get you up and running with playing your Steam games on Linux. For additional support and customization options, I recommend checking out my video titled Essential Apps for Linux Gaming, which covers topics such as peripherals, custom versions of Proton, and performance monitoring. Stay tuned for the second video following this one where we will install non-Steam launchers on Linux Mint. If you find this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing and checking out my membership and or donation links in the description below. I want to thank you all for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.